this um, and changing the one to a two, I accidentally downloaded it multiple times. So I have parentheses, we get rid of that, change the one to a two and save. Double check your name is in B6. And then we are going to go ahead and start on the project. So Sharia Hayek is the assistant director of the Claims Center for Panoramic Insurance in Nashville, Tennessee. She's been tracking monthly insurance claim submissions in an Excel workbook and asked for your help in analyzing the data. So we're going to go to the claims log worksheet. And this worksheet is a table with claims list that uh, data about each claim session submission. So Shira wants you to list the policy type for each claim which corresponds to the prefix column um, for the policy type as follows. So before I do this I want us to go over to the lookups page and I want you guys to notice over here these are the lookups that we're going to be referencing and in our name box here we can see when we're referencing claim type this is what we're referencing. When we're referencing codes, this is what we're referencing, and when we're referencing policy types, so when we're about to use an H lookup here in the first step, it's going to look horizontally across these at that prefix number 100, 200, 300, and return me the second row of that data. So I want to make sure we understand what we're saying, what it's referencing that we're putting in that claims log. So in cell F6, we're going to enter a formula of H lookup. And we're going to look up that prefix, and we're going to use a comma to get to the next thing. In the table array, we can just type policy types. So right here, you can just type policy types, but I'm actually going to go to the lookups table and show you that when I select this section, it gives me policy types. And so I'm looking up horizontally that prefix in this, and I am returning the second row. So you type policy types, comma, two because we want the second row, and it tells us specifically for range lookup for it to be true. We want an approximate match. None of them are exactly 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, so we want an approximate match here. And this auto fills in across the entire table, and so we can see this is our formula that we're using here, and now we've done step one. So now we're going to do something similar for step two with claim type, except we're going to use X lookup. Um, and so we're going to do equals X lookup. I want to look up the claim code and I want to compare it to those codes that we are have in. Um, so I'm just going to type it here instead of going to the lookups column. We're going to use codes as our lookup and we're going to return the claim type based off the code. And once again, well, for X lookup, we specify if not found. We're not putting anything in there, so we're just going to skip that argument. So right now I'm in the if not found, I put another comma, and now I'm in match mode. It tells me to specify match mode 1 as exact match or next larger item. And I don't need a search mode, so I'm going to end my parentheses there. So that's my formula. Go ahead and hit enter, and that gives me all of my claim types for the entire sheet. Okay. Next up, when submitting a claim, customers rate their... Um, experience of coverage, value, and service. And so we want to average these together in column M. Um, so M6, we're going to do an average function. And we're just going to average coverage, value, and service. And I close parentheses and hit enter. So right there, I average together coverage, value, and service. So coverage through service. And now I've done the average. Next up, the company policy is to make a follow-up call within one week to customers who submit claims to a renter's insurance policy and to call customers within three days if their rating is less than three. So in cell N6, we're going to do an ifs function. So if something, then something. But ifs, it just means plural. We can do multiple. I'm going to go ahead and click on this FX box so I can put my logic tests in here. So my first logic test is if the policy type is renter. So I'm going to click on policy type. So if the policy type equals, and I have to put this in quotations, renters, which this one does not, it's the first one is po uh, auto policy, so that's false. But if it were true, we would want it to say one week. So we have to put it in quotes if we want it to say it. So if it is true, we want it to say one week. So now we get a second logic test here. Well, it's not just if it's renters, it's also if the average is less than or equal to three, 
which this one is not, it's 5.7, so we get false again. But if that is true, we need three-day follow-up. So we make it say three days as a follow-up. And then finally, um, if I just hit OK right now, um, anything that doesn't fit this um, will give me NA, which I don't want. I just want it to stay blank if it doesn't say anything. So we're going to make our third logic test just be true. So if this isn't true and this isn't true, our third logic test, we're just going to make it say true. It clearly says true. I'm going to hit tab here. And the value of true, we're just going to leave it blank. So two quotations makes it a blank cell. And then we're going to hit OK and it will autofill. See how it stays blank here? Because our third argument is true, leave it blank. But first it checks if it renters, and then it checks if the average is less than three days, and we fill those in here. So that was step four. Step five, Shear asks you to complete the summary information on the range P4 through, um, in this area, the summary area. So first we're going to do an a count if function. So in Q6 we're going to do count if. And here's what we're doing here. We're counting the number of claims for an agent Fernandez has. So that's why we're going to do count if. We're only going to count it if Fernandez is the one who did it. So count if. And we have our range. The thing we can count if it's actually Fernandez is the agent. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to use the trick where if I move my mouse, oh, come on, something is happening. Okay, right above, if I move my mouse right above um, the agent column, it becomes a down arrow and it selects all of the claims agent. I could have selected that whole range myself, but so I'm gonna say if the claims agent is Fernandez and currently Fernandez is covered by my function, but that's in cell P6. So I'm just gonna put P6 there. So it's only gonna count the agents if it's Fernandez to know how many claims Fernandez has, which is eight. So now, since we just put P6 there, when I move this down, it'll check Hawkins, Kaori, all of those. So when I drag this down, notice it brings some formatting we don't want. So make sure to fill without formatting. Next up, we're going to do an average if. So same type of thing, except for we can't actually average the Fernandez's. We want to average the averages. So we're going to come in here and do an average if function. Average if. So we still have to check if it's Fernandez. So we're checking if the agent is comma Fernandez. So once again, the starting is the same, except for the next step, we want to say what we want to average. So I'm going to hit common again, and I'm going to get an average range. I want to average the average if it's Fernandez as the agent. So this is what my formula should look like. I'm going to come over here so we can see the full formula. And now I can see I'm averaging if the claims is Fernandez. Once again, I drag this down and fill without formatting. So that was step seven, moving on to, sorry, that was step six, moving on to step seven. For the record locator information, we're going to be using the xmatch function. This is not a very good use of the xmatch function, but I'll still tell you guys how it works. So in Q16, we're going to use xmatch, so equals xmatch. We're going to use what it tells us to. We're going to look up the highest value. Now right here, we have a rating scale. So 1 is the lowest, 7 is the highest. We're going to look for 7 in the average column. So now I've in look up array. So I'm looking for a 7 in the average column. And I want match mode as 1 to be the exact match or next highest. So when I press enter on that formula, I get the number eight. So what this is, it's not saying it found the number eight because the ratings only go to seven. And it's not even saying row eight because that is the average is three in row eight. What this is saying is in this range, the eighth record is our highest. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's our seven that we were looking for, and it's in the eighth spot of that array. So that's how match works. It's a very useful function. I don't know that's doing very well, good work here. Um, and we do the same thing for lowest. So X match, we look for the lowest in that same array, so comma, that same array, and we want match mode one again. This time it's uh, 
11 is what it gives us. So if that was 8, we go 9, 10, 11, and we can see that that is the lowest rating, is record number 8. So it is useful, um, just not so much here. Okay, so this is what ours should look like before moving on to the claims by agent worksheet. Here, we're going to ask you to compare the claims data by um, type for each agent. So we're going to insert a pivot table in cell B3. So we're going to click on B3. We're going to go insert, and we're just going to click on pivot table. Don't hit the drop down, just click pivot table. And here you're just going to type claims. That's the name of our table. So just type claims, but I want to also show you guys what's happening here. It's coming to claims. It's taking this whole table, and if I select this whole table, we know that table is called claims. So I'm going to hit OK. Now we have a table based off claims. Your pivot table field should look exactly like this. Shouldn't look any different. Redo that step if yours looks any different than mine. We need to change the name of our pivot tables. Currently, it's named pivot table one. In pivot table analyze, we can change the name. Under pivot table, we change it to be agent claims with no space. Now we have a pivot table named agent claims. And the best part about pivot tables, it's just dragging and dropping. So we drag agent name, agent to column headings. We drag claim type to rows, and then we drag policy type to rows underneath claim type and then we drag claim type to values so all we've done is drag and drop make sure your numbers match mine if not redo your pivot table and so this is what this should look like but we want it to um, be green so we're going to change the design of this we're going to go up to design and change it to this lime pivot style 17 so now it's green, and we're going to center the data from ranges C5 to J29 to be home, alignment, center. And then it asks us to change the row labels to be claim types. So we just start typing claim types. And then we change column labels to be agents. So now that we have that figured out, Shira also asks you to insert a chart that compares the agents with the top three claims. So our agents with the top three claims are Fernandez, Hawkins, and Kaori. So we're going to insert a pivot chart. Um, so we're going to go to insert, pivot chart, and with that we can go to column, clustered column, and Okay, continuing, we are column, clustered column, we want stacked column chart for a, our pivot chart. We click OK. It automatically pops up here in the middle of our screen. Um, we're not going to move it just yet because first we want to filter the pivot chart to show only Fernandez, Hawkins, and Kaori. So we hit this drop down on agent. Um, I'm going to deselect all so that way I can just select Fernandez, Hawkins, and Kaori. I click OK and we can see it changed the pivot chart and the pivot sorry, the pivot table and the pivot chart. Um, next up, we want to reposition this to be an H3, H3 and O23. So we have that there. Then it asks us to change the color to monochromatic palette two. So that's in design when we're, make sure you're clicked on the pivot chart. And then we're going to change colors to the monochromatic green palette two. And then we are going to hide the filter buttons. So currently we have all these filter buttons. We want them hidden to take up less space. So under pivot table analyze, we can see the field buttons on here. We want to remove those field buttons so we can just deselect right here. If you hit the drop down, you just press hide all. So that's how we get rid of our field buttons. And this is what our page should look like before we move on to the next one. So moving on to ratings by claim, step 12, we're going to add another pivot chart in B3. So click on B3, insert, pivot table, sorry, pivot table, not pivot chart. Pivot table, just click right here. Don't hit the drop down. Once again, based off claims. So I'm just going to type in claims. It's currently named pivot table two. We need to change that name under pivot table to be monthly ratings without any spaces. 
I hit enter, should say monthly ratings right here. Once again, this is a drag and drop feature. I drag date over here and it should have month, days, date. Um, don't change anything about that. That's what it should look like. If not, redo your pivot table, follow the steps. And then claim type to rows and average as values. Now notice what happens when I drag average to values. This is summing the averages. A sum of averages is not very helpful, and so we need to change that. So we're going to come in here. Instead of a sum of averages, we're going to go to value field settings. We want it to be an average of averages, but also we want to specify the number format. So we're going to click on number format. We want it to be number with one decimal place. We're going to click OK. Click OK. And now we have averages that make a lot more sense with one decimal place. And then we're going to change that color again. So design, we want it to be that green one, just like the last one. So now we have this lovely pivot table, but we're going to add some slicers onto it. And so Shira asked you to focus on ratings for homeowner policies in April. So we're going to make a slicer. So in pivot table analyze, we can insert slicer. It's also on insert filters also has slicer. Either way you go to will be the right way. We're going to insert a slicer on claim type. I have my slicer here. I'm going to move it to be in G3 and H11. So a little bit smushed here. And it's not green, so we're going to make change it to the green one. Lime slicer light style 2. And we're going to use the slicer to filter on homeowners. So we're just going to click on homeowner, and now we've sliced our data. Last step, step 15, we're going to use a timeline slow slicer to focus on April claims. So we're going to go to, um, we're going to click on our pivot table again. We have pivot table analyze, and we're going to insert a timeline. You don't want to just insert a slicer, you want a timeline. Timelines can only be on dates, so we have that here. Now we have a date slicer. We want to change that color once again to the green one, um, lime style 2, and it says it wants the exact width of the slicer to be 6.9. So I come over here to width, and I do 6.9, hit enter. So now my width is wider, but it also wants it to be in B13 and H19, but I don't want to change the width. Notice this comes a little bit over into I. I'm just going to make column H wider. Um, it's totally fine to do that. It's still in column H19. Just make sure this says 6.9 up here. So now it says to use the timeline slicer to show for April only. Currently, because before we changed the size, it was stuck on the second half of the month. The way you fix that, if you click on June, then you can click on April. So now we have a proper timeline slicer, proper width. Um, our data is in the right spots. This is what it should look like. Double check that yours looks like what it should look like. Make sure you save and then submit it into As You Learn, not As You Learn, into Cengage. Double check that you got everything right, that you got 20 out of 20. And then if you didn't, make sure you resubmit. Um, fix any of the mistakes that you may have made, um, 20 out of 20. And that's all that there is for project for module seven. Have a good rest of your day.